Good morning. Um, this morning, I want to share in my, my read time with you. Um, that as you um, listen in, maybe you'll have leave feedback on things read. Um, I will say this. It's just something that happened recently with me that thank God for reminders. Um, and those reminders, I'm um, looking at them in a sense of a push in the right direction, in the right direction. Um, about two days ago, I think, two or three days ago, somewhere now. Um, you know, I'm working on something and I can't really get to where I'm trying to get and what I'm working on. And there's a, a young lady um, that I would watch sometime, and I haven't watched her in a little while, but I wind up clicking it. And right in the midst of all she was talking about, <laughs> she talked about her own life, how there's times when she's trying to do her work and it's a reminder that she need to go and read and or pray because she haven't done that for the day, you know. Um, and whether it was both or just one, and what it was for me that particular day, I had prayed that morning, but I had I had not taken the time out to read as of yet. And so I stopped what I was doing right there. It was like you know that, that <laughs> I need to go read, <laughs> and um. And so, what what do I get from that? Um, there are times when where I know we're, we're not gonna always well, we're not gonna always line up to doing things like clockwork, you know, you know, step by step, this first, then that, then this, then that. But I think there's times where we could have done this or done that. And I'm talking about to, pertaining to God and all things God. And we just don't do it, right? We get that feeling of don't feel like it, you know. We think about how drawn out, man, when I go pray, when I go read. I already know I might always block off 30 minutes of my life or block off two hours of my life. Because you know how long, you got an idea of how long you sometimes are there. Um, not intentionally, but it, you know it happens, whatever it may be. And whatever other reason. And guys, that's wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm on it for myself. That, that's wrong. That's not the way to be. Because everything else we got going on in our life that we call busy, God can put a halt to all that. We wouldn't want that. So um, the way I go into reading here recently is I pray. And, and I have prayed. I prayed before I came on. So I don't want to change my subject. And I'm using that um or should I say theme? I don't know. So in the morning, thank God to see another day. Based off of my prayer, I look for a subject in my prayer as I'm praying. As I'm, you know, when you read a book and you find a subject matter. Um, yesterday, my read was on Pearl, P-E-R-I-L. Now, Pearl was not the term that came to mind initially. There was another term, but I had to wind up with what it, how, how to translate it um, biblically or in the Word of God. So it dealt with um, Pearl. Um, and so I wound up reading three different scriptures um, yesterday. Um, surrounding that as it related to my life because um, I was going through some things in three different areas of my life um, that I was that were attacking or just overwhelming or I, I don't know the terminology but I knew they had to be addressed this morning um, faithfulness come is the subject matter in my prayer and where I'm at this morning and so um, I'm, I go into the back of my Bible um, to find the terminology and normally I scroll through it you know the scriptures that they give you 
And as um, as I felt led, I go with that scripture. You know, it's so many in here, right? So I read the little heading and I go with that scripture. And that's what I've been doing here recently or whatever. Uh, I know we all got our own way of how we come across what's what we're going to read that day, this and that. But right now, that's where I'm at. Um, you can share in the comment down below. Excuse me. How do you um, find yourself in the scriptures that you read every morning or throughout the day? How, how do you get there? You may Google something. You may go with a Bible app. You may go with your church organization, what they post. But how do you? So leave that in the comment section would be a, would be good um, and everything. I think so long as we're getting <laughs> the word of God, we're not going to be critical of how I'm not going to be critical. Um, because I know minds have changed up over my walk with Christ. It has been different motivations of how. Uh, I think there's a pastor on um, YouTube that I know he's on YouTube. So when I say I think, let me just get my terminology right. I'm thinking back to, I believe, a sermon he did um, talking about um, this very subject. But my, my mind is kind of vague to point you to the surety that I remember him doing one. But I feel like I know he did one. Um and everything so uh, I, I, I watch him a lot um, <laughs> his name is um, David Guzik just to put that out I know there's so many pastors out there like who is you know, but he's past he's David Guzik but that's I don't fall under his umbrella though but I do believe he really has a sincere desire to see um, people make it to heaven. So that's what um, one of the that's one of the biggest things that I I'm about when listening to um, someone else speaking about God, the Word of God. It matters to me. I, are they genuinely trying to point people to God, uh, to Christ? And also, are they being honest? Are they willing to be honest? Let me tell you about this pastor. Now, I'm just, now stay with me. I, I have a pastor. My pastor is Pastor Ron Gaddis uh, at the church in Richmond, Virginia. And yes, I love uh, my pastor, his truth, um, and everything. Um. What was my point I'm getting to? My mind, uh, <laughs> my mind escapes me. Oh, I want to establish that just to be clear so, so nobody don't think, um, oh wait, you ain't getting it from, from church? Yes, I'm getting it from church. But in the meantime, I like to be on YouTube, okay? We all go on YouTube for something. We all go on YouTube for something. And when I say we all, it's not 100%. Um, but I know some people who say they don't know nothing about YouTube, but it's just one of those terms. We all, right? But I've heard this pastor, which I was like, whoa, speak truth. Now you're like, wait, he speak truth, right? Anyway, right? That's why you, yes. But there's those bold pastors who will go to another level with truth. And there's those who will stay away from it. You know, and more so this is about those that are on social Net on the social network, social media, or whatever the case. And I think one of the first ones one time, you just don't hear uh, pastors today. Now, there's one that's real rowdy. I'm going to say who he is. And everybody probably know who he is, who would tell you in a heartbeat, okay? <laughs> he's, he's real rowdy. But this pastor, even though I can tell it seemed... He, he wanted to be considerate of uh, people's feelings. He still gave the truth. And it was pretty much him letting people know, you're not a disciple of Jesus Christ if, meaning you're not a 
Christian, you're not in the faith. And I'm talking about, I mean, I think that was one of the first ones he, first times I heard him out. I mean, because, I mean, I listened to him for a while and I never heard him speak on that next level. This is next level when now you're telling people what they are and what they're not. Okay. Normally, uh, there's sermons on the word of God explaining Moses, his life, his walk. And then there's the encouragement. Let's be like this. You know, so that's. That's the norm. That's the casual. When you go into telling people where they're at in relation to God, you're with them. You're not with them. Um, oh, telling people what is right and what is wrong. So there's the casual what is right and what is wrong, right? God don't like liars. Yeah, you know, um, the casuals, right? But when you go into, I'm, this pastor fits the bill. When you talk about homosexuality and and call it wrong a sin not of god whoa this is you you're now on another level of preaching in my book because there's many who won't do it won't do it so anyway faithfulness this morning faithful faithfulness and i pray the lord guide me i'm not here to teach i'm here to read though in reading <laughs> just talking and sharing i get passionate sometimes about things and and unfortunately some people take my passion the wrong way they think i'm angry they think i'm angry i think i need to consider and i do i'm, I'm gonna say they think, when they say that, i need to choose my words um paul talked about um i believe i believe amongst the apostles he wasn't deemed the wit one you know i, I guess the more qualified, I don't, I don't know something to that degree, but he spoke about his 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 um I can't remember oh what it, I know ultimately he gave credit or acknowledgement to his knowledge of God, though I believe he's I believe he's he was rowdy. I mean I, I can't think of the term that's in in scripture that he used but he, he didn't always have the, the the right delivery okay um but he had the right intention the, the, i mean the, he had the word together the word of god together so so ultimately you know i believe over time god molded him and shaped him so many times people want people to it's like they hear just your tone You're right you know what i'm saying they, they just Excuse me. They they don't like your tone. You, you're too deep. You, you you're too loud. Maybe you're too soft, right? But and, and they give no notice to what's coming out though. Oh wait wait wait. In spite of the things I disagree with, how they sound, how they look, they're not wearing the you know <laughs> the colors I think a pastor or or a teacher should wear. You know or. I, or, or they're not standing in a position, you know, why he's not in the pulpit, why he's standing on the, all right, you, you, you distracted by everything, yeah, but what spewing out, oh, wait, 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 they're speaking the word of God, oh, they're speaking truth, oh, wow, so truth is amongst all my little pet peeves, all my little judgments that I put on some, oh, wow, oh, wow, so, so, <laughs> I hope I ain't losing the body there, but yeah, um, we didn't always begin with perfect speech, perfect delivery, but what matter is make sure we're delivering in our imperfections, the perfection of the word of God, the truth of the word of God. Hopefully I ain't losing anybody on that. Mm. Guys, I'm going to need a little bit of time. I, I have to... <clears throat>
excuse me. Look through these scriptures to see as the, the heart is led. So, um, stay with me. And actually, I, I, I'm not ignoring you, but I know I can't be authentically here if I'm here. So that's why I'm, so don't think I'm ignoring you, but I have to be authentically here. So bear, bear with me, please. Nehemiah chapter 13. I think I know where Nehemiah is, but I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. It's okay. Let's get found from where I need to be. Nehemiah chapter 13. Why why this one? As the heart leads. It it's just a little a little passage there that points to me and the little passage here says they were counted and so faithful would be the thing there now I don't just go to that particular um, verse no I, I, I'm now going to read all of that chapter um but they are counted faithful. So am I saying I'm counted faithful? I want to be counted faithful. You know, uh, that's the reason why I thank God I responded to the reminders. You know, like I said before, to go and read, right? Don't, don't neglect reading. So I, that's why that, that stuck out for me, right? So I, I want to be counted faithful. And I pray I am counted faithful, Um in the Lord's eyes um, and so forth so again I'm not teaching I'm just reading but I do at times as the Lord lead as the heart um, it may sound like I'm teaching or something <laughs> on that day Nehemiah chapter 13 at verse 1. On that day, they read in the book of Moses in the audience of the people. And therein was found written that the Ammonite and the Moabite should not come into the congregation of God forever. Wow. What had they done to be stay out? Well, in verse two, here we go. <laughs> I'm asking it, and here we go. It, it say because I'm assuming that it's better tell me <laughs> because they met not the children of Israel with bread and water 
but hired Balaam against them, that he should curse them. Howbeit our God turned the curse into a blessing. Wow. Wow. There are people who, who in Psalms, I think it talk about the, 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 tra the traps and the snares that our enemy uh, set for us. And then there's a prayer with that there that God will um, take us over or around and to that degree, some to that degree. But here, still yet, what comes to mind is one, to see how God take what's bad, what's meant for bad. The intention is bad. Excuse me. But God operates in his sovereignty and his power and turns it for good. Um, many of you don't know this, but I have a child out of wedlock. And There is bad in that. There is bad in my unfaithfulness. I think that says enough. Because I am married. I think about Abraham and his wife and the maid servant. Abraham and his wife, they made bad decisions. A child came out of that. And that mother wound up fleeing. But God had to send her back and told her to humble or submit herself unto Sarah, I believe. But God also told her, your child, right, I believe, if, if, if I remember, was going to be blessed. That didn't mean, that didn't translate into, oh, so... Abraham and Sarah's decisions now are clean. No, they're still bad decisions. They're still against God's will decisions. But God turned what was bad into good. That's going to be too much for some people to get. Because you only see the bad. Oh, and how terrible, how terrible you are that you cheated on your wife, that you this. Yes, those things are bad. But God is able to take what we do bad and make it good. You, it's too much. That's, I, that's too much for some people to, to comprehend, to get that. I, I know it is. But I know God can do that. And is doing that. <laughs> and is doing that. Let me confirm. And is doing that. It's not like, well, we still waiting to see if he's going to turn this for good. I can tell you, he is turning it for good. Oh, that's a whole nother. He is. In verse 3. Now it came to pass. When they had heard the law, that they separated from Israel all the mixed multitude. And before this, Elisha, Elisha, the priest, having the oversight of the chamber of the whole uh, oversight of the chamber of the house of our God was 
allied unto Tobiah. And before this, Elisha, the priest, having the oversight of the chamber of the house of our God, was allied unto Tobiah. And he had prepared for him a great chamber where uh, where aforetime they laid the meat offerings, the frankincense and the vessels and the tithes of the corn, the new wine and the oil, which was commanded to be given to the Levites and the singers and the porters and the offerings of the priests. But in all this time was not I at Jerusalem, for in the two and thirteenth year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon, came I unto the king, and after certain days obtained I leave of the king. And I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Elisha did for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. You heard it, they call that evil. It, it um, was seen here, they had no right, green, go ahead. Um, they had not, I can't elaborate too much here. I'm sure there's more to it, but on the surface, I know they was out of place. Again, I'm just, I'm reading here. As the Lord opened up my understanding, I, I will. You may elaborate in the comment section on that, you know, a deeper understanding there. But I know it was deemed evil. Well, what can I, what can I learn from this? We're, even with the understanding of whatever I do gather here. We can't do anything in the house of God. And we don't always have the, uh, the, 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 the authority or the green light because it's the church. I can, you know, carry on and behave any type of way, you know, because, because I, you know, I, I, because I want to, um, I'm part of this church and because this is a good platform for me to put on this puppet show that I want to put on. I'm, I'm going to do it at the church. That might, that might not be okay. Right? I mean, I mean that's what I'm gathering. That there's an order uh, to things. That there, there, there is things being okayed. Um, not just doing. Verse 7 of Nehemiah chapter 13. And I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Eliashib, Eliashib, Eliashib did for Tobiah in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. Two reads, and now I know what the evil is. He prepared a chamber <laughs> in the courts of the house of God. Isn't that beautiful? Sometimes we have to reread. We have to keep reading and dig deeper. The Lord open our understanding. It's right there. The, the terminologies didn't change uh, anything. The, the words are the same. The understanding is now gotten on what he did. Um, thank you, Lord. But it's still a deeper understanding, no doubt, I'm sure, here for me to, to get as the Lord allowed and open my understanding to. And it grieved me sore Therefore, I cast forth all the household stuff of Tobiah out of the chamber. Then I commanded, and they cleansed the chambers. And thither brought I again the vessels of the house of God 
with the meat offerings and the frankincense. And I perceived that the portions of the Levites had not been given them for the Levites and the singers that did the work were fled everyone to his field. Then contended I with the rulers and said, Why is the house of God forsaken? And I gathered them together and set them in their place. Then brought all Judah the tithe of the corn and the new wine and the oil into unto the treasuries. And I made treasures over the treasuries. Shalemiah the priest and Zadok the scribe and of the Levites Hadiah and next to them was Hanan the son of Zachar the son of Mataniah for they were counted faithful and their office was to distribute unto their brethren. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. In those days saw I in Judah some treading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in sheaves and ladings, asses, as also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens, which they brought into Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold victuals. Hey, Google, define victuals. Victuals has two different meanings. Hey, Starting Google. The most common one. Hey, Vittles Google. Can be used as a noun as an archaic term to mean food or provisions, as in turkey and other savory victuals were served. Is that the meaning you were thinking of? Mm. Uh, no. All right. Finally, vittles can be used as a verb as an archaic term to mean provide with food or other stores. Do you want to hear vittle used in an example? No. Hey, Google. What is V-I-C-T-U-A-L? Vittle has two different meanings. Starting with the most common one. Hey, Google. Can be used stop all right so it's interesting how it's pronounced with i'm thinking that's what i'm thinking i said victuals but it's biggles i mean the way google pronounced it so um so it's a, a food of sort um it's what i gather with the sh listening that i so, and I, so I'm going to go back to verse 15, the latter part. And I testified against them in the day wherein they sold vigils. Vig, vigils. That's vigils. Sound like it's a G, she's saying. Vigils. There dwelt men of Tyre also therein, which brought fish. And all manner of ware and sold on the Sabbath unto the children of Judah and in Jerusalem. Then I counted, then I contended with the nobles of Judah and said unto them, What evil thing is this that ye do and profane the Sabbath day? Did not your fathers thus? And did not our God bring all this evil upon us? 
and upon this city. Yet ye bring more wrath upon Israel by profaning the Sabbath. 18 kind of there's more read here like it kind of <clears throat> sums up but not in its totality but it gives a great insight to a constant behavior that has continued to go on and go on as if People don't want to learn. Like, like, wasn't you punished enough before? Haven't God already shown he disapproved of this? Haven't God already, uh, didn't you get it the first time? Did you get it the second time? <laughs> but the point is, because of your conti continuation in doing wrong, dishonoring God, it's like where you throw your hands up. Like, what, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? How much clearer do God need to make it that he don't play? He's serious about a thing. This, this, yeah, this is applied today. Self-examine is what happens here. Don't start thinking about, yeah, my children need to be on to hear this one right now. My, you know, my mama, <laughs> you know, man, that person at my job, who I always tell my, how holy they are, but man, they, 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 start with self, self-examine. Is this, is this pointing to us? And if it's not, amen, amen, amen. But if it is, oh, stay with me. Because there's two things here. We just had a lesson recently at church. I think last Sunday. I believe it was. And so right here, there is hearers. And then there are those who react to what they heard. And then there are those who hear and don't do nothing. So here we, we, we at a point of hearing. We all have heard it. But now what's your reaction to it? Ah, ah. Hear it. Oh, Lord, forgive me. Help me to do better. Help me to stay faithful. Correct thing. Yes. Yes. There's a right response to hearing the truth of God, the word of God. There's a right response and there's a wrong. May we always choose the right. And we identify that we've been doing something for a time period and that comes to light you've been doing this for 30 days thank god for his mercies and his faithfulness you have opportunity right then and there to repent to ask forgiveness of that thing don't let satan tell you you know these last 30 days you ain't even been god's god meaning belonging to that's what i'm, I'm not saying you are a god you haven't even belonged to him see that because look at that, that you, boom, you just found out how terrible and how wrong you've been living, you know, these past 30 days that has just come to light. So see, don't fall for that trick. If your heart is conditioned, right then and there, you'll, you'll be asking your God to forgive you. He'll know you're sorrowful. But if you are one who blows it off like, ah, Evidently, God loves me. I mean, he didn't destroy me these last 30 days. And, you know, I still got that promotion two days ago. Um, so I really don't, I really don't think God mad at me. And I'm just going to, you know, continue to do what I'm doing. <clears throat> don't take God's kindness and his blessings and his mercies for weakness, for to be taken for granted. Don't get complacent and content. Always put in effort, intentional effort to please God. Always.
Put in intentional effort to please God. Be purpose about doing that. Verse 19 of Nehemiah chapter 13. And it came to pass that when the gates of Jerusalem began to be dark before the Sabbath, I commanded that the gates should be shut and charged and charge that they should not be open till after the Sabbath. And some of my servants set I at the gate. And some of my servants set I at the gates that there should no burden be brought in on the Sabbath day. So the merchants and sellers of all kind of ware lodge without Jerusalem once or twice. Then I testified against them and said unto them, Why lodge ye about the wall? If ye do so again, I will lay hands on you. From that time forth came they no more on the Sabbath. God, I'm a, I want to share this with you, and I pray my pastor don't hold this against me. <laughs> but I'm learning. I'm learning. We we get we get we get the church this this past Sunday, right? And the parking lot is full. We're a small church. Parking lot is not full, but the parking lot is full with parking. Where we had to park, I think it was three three to four. We're a small church, small parking lot. But there was three, possibly four cars that had nothing to do with coming to church, park in our parking lot at the church. So we had to uh, adjust pertaining to parking, which is parking on the other side of the church. And so two thoughts came to mind, right? One... The least they can do, the people who just parking on the church property, right? And I think a third thought came to mind. But one, they can park because they see it's, it's the residents right behind the church. They see us come to church on, and they notice where we park. So the least they could do if they're going to park here is park on the side where they know we don't park. So that was a thought. Two, there was a thought of people, well, they're... People are just, when it comes to churches, there's no consideration. There's no threat for anything. You know, it's like I can do whatever. It's, it's the church. You know, it's there's no regard. Okay. And then the third one was, well, the church ain't going to get them told. Right. <laughs> so after church, <laughs> right, I'm learning. And the reason why, you know, I'm laughing is I'm like, can a church get people's vehicles towed? Like, can we without like it, it's that thing of what people now want to frown on you as a church. Right. Um, what type of love is that? What type of uh, um, support for your neighbor is that? If you're going to get my car towed. But after church, some signs went out to let people know. No parking here, get a move. And I believe, I don't have the paper in my hand, but from what my wife led me to believe, they're going to get told. <laughs> they're going to get told if they don't move. And so if that, if I'm learning, people will look to take advantage of God's property, God's people, no regard. I mean, all of these things. And it's good that our hearts are, are in the right place. But we also got to know how to handle business. We got to know how to uh, get things in order. We can't be pushovers. The church members need to part. 
We worship here. We don't want to have to, I mean, because it didn't start off with just uh, three or four or whatever it was. It, I think it just it just to be one. So over time, this is, this. oh, this has happened over time. Another, more vehicles have stacked. And again, you have to see the prop this small. So four vehicles parked out there is a lot because that's how small the lot is. It's not a big lot. Where are we going to park? I guess we need to adjust and go find a park down the street. And then we walk back up. No. So, I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm, I'm not even going to ask for anybody's feedback on that. I'm 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 learning. Okay, my my pastor's a a good pastor, a wonderful pastor. So I don't need any feedback on that. Outside of my pastor saying, "Uh, actually, John, I'm not gonna get him told. I just want to give him a stern warning." Now my pastor can say, "Okay, that's that's what we was doing now." But other than that, you know, the way my pastor handled business, like I'm learning. Okay. Um, uh, Nehemiah chapter 13 at verse, I think I'm at 22. I'm not sure. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse. Excuse me. I'm sorry. And I commanded the Levites that they should cleanse themselves and that they should come and keep the gates to sanctify the Sabbath day. Remember me, O oh my God, concerning this also and spare me according to the greatness of thy mercy. In those days also saw I Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, of Ammon, and of Moab. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod and could not speak in the Jews' language, but, but according to the language of each people. But according, so could not speak in the Jews' language, but according to the language of each people. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God saying ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons nor take their daughters unto your sons or for yourselves did not Solomon king of Israel sin by these things wow what a what a uh 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 a reference and a point to drive home. As the Lord allow me here. Uh, Solomon. The, the wisest. Solomon. Who at a point in his life his heart condition was perfect, I would have to say, because he desired wisdom. It mattered to him in dealing with God's people. It mattered. Like, it mattered, and God gave him that and more. But this man, excuse me, David's son um, I, be, I, be, I believe Solomon I just want to I got to be right I know I said it casually like that but I want to be correct um I, well not I want to be correct I want to make sure I get it correct <laughs> hey um hey Google who is David in the Bible's children? Sometimes ask me, how many children did David from the Bible have? 
Do you want to hear the answer? Yes. On the website Easy English Bible, they say, five these are the names of David's sons who were born in Jerusalem, Shemaiah, Shobab, Nathan, and Solomon. The mother of these four sons was Amal's daughter, Bathsheba. Six David had nine other sons, Ipar, Elishama, Eliphalet, seven Noga, Nephid, Jophia, eight Elishama, Eliada, and Eliphalet. I got more just now than I'm bargaining for. Now, I have to say, if all that be true, and the reason I put it that way, we have, when we hear something, we should know for ourselves by reading it for ourselves. A lot of people go to church, but they'll never pick up this Bible. It, this one physically, no, you can't pick this. This is mine. But they'll never pick up the Bible for themselves. They will take everything from the pulpit and... There is something wrong with that. Because where's your personal relationship with God? That's you being, that's your teachings that is happening from that poor pit. You know, that's God's servant doing their part of looking over the flock. But where's your personal relationship with God? That's, that's the question. Where's your personal relationship? We should have a personal relationship. So, and in the personal relationships, we grow in the knowledge and the understanding of the word of God, um, to know the word of God. Yeah, she just ran off a lot of names that I did not know if that be true. I have to just put it that way. Pertaining to David, okay? But I got my answer for Solomon. <laughs> okay, um, did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Yet among Many nations was there no king like him who was beloved of his God and God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, even him did outlandish women cause to sin. No matter what your status is in life, no matter how great a gift how great the blessing. You have to purposely be reminded, intentionally stay walking. A lot of people don't think they can fall off from God once they, you know, I've been so in with God. There's people I disagree with all the time. I'm just going to say that. I disagree with them all the time. I disagree with them. They carry these titles. But the way they carry on. Lining up to the world. Want to go to your Beyonce concerts. What's holy about them? What is, what is in that darkness that you, that supposed to be of the light, need in your life? Oh, it can it go on, but I, I, I'm, I, I'm, you know, I know I start something when I just said that. Let it be started. Let it be started. Let it be, let, let, hey, hey, hey. I want to be bold for the Lord. Speak the truth. Run not from Wicked mouths, wicked hearts, those who supposed to be of the body of Christ who say, that, don't say that though. Don't say that though. We live in a different age now. Oh, the word of God changes. Depending on the age we're in. Stone age, ice age, new age, old age. <laughs> no. This word remains the same. The standard is still the same. It's just us as people.
I grew up going to school, kindergarten, every morning, to the best of my knowledge, hand over my... I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, for which it stand, one nation under God, individually, with liberty and justice for all. And I probably didn't quote that all the way right. We did that. Then there is my country, tears of thee sweet. There was singing. It was all of that. God, God, God. And then at some point, it happened. But, of course, I, get, I grew older, right? So it's not happening because I'm in high school or... But oh look, it's not happening in elementary, right? Because you still got l little siblings or, or family members, right? It, so basically, God was taken out. And there came a point where we knew, okay, God cannot be mentioned. No, right? We knew it. We knew it. You can't. I want y'all to hear me out. Also, going back to this early age, growing up, They would say AIDS. Now AIDS is a you know disease, but they 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 said a lot of AIDS that was going around came from. Now at this point, people were more in the closet about it. Came from people um, having same sex relationships. I'm trying to think what term they used back then. I know gay is a term, but I feel like there was another term that they used back then, um, which escapes my mind. Because I don't, I, gay, you hear gay, but I, I, I know it's something else. Probably something bad, so I probably don't need to remember. <laughs> okay. But then it came a point where people, I mean, this is, I'm not talking about, this is not I me, mean, this is not I me, mean, this is, the science this is the people there was a consensus that this is one way a lot of aids was being spread and also with uh come to mind with with the drug drug you know needles um a lot you know people sharing needles with the drugs so that was the two things but it came a point where now People are being forced to be for homosexuality. And, and what, one of my real thoughts when this first started being promoted was, but I thought this was one of the biggest ways AIDS is being transmitted. So, but what I didn't know then is what I do know now. It's just the world shifting it changes people get louder in their celebrity status people realize that there's riches there's money if you promote an agenda oh people oh oh it's it to me i think all of it ties back to money you know in one way or another now somebody may say don't don't mention her let's just put it like this there's a, a a a person who grew up on in soap opera, well not soap opera, and in, in the in the TV talk shows, who audience used to be majority this, but there came a point where their audience barely had that. Also, the look of the people changed, right? Not that there was anything wrong with the look of the people then, but that's how people identified and it was nothing wrong with their identity but there came a point where ah i can't have that look in my audience it's money the world shift and, and change is good but what i'm saying is what never like the bible the word of god never shifted <laughs> or changed any of that. The word of God required us to love those who operate in sin then and love them now. 
what a lot of people can't comprehend. And this is for those who genuinely love the sinner man, meaning the one who's a rapist, a child molester, homosexuality, drunkards, liars, con artists, which ties into your lying, but still, I mean, all of the right, you genuinely love the person, but you hate the sin. So a lot of people can't comprehend that. If they say, if you, if you, if, if, if you saying you hate my lifestyle, which is it, and that's us, us declaring it as sin. You hate that. You hate me. And so some people can't get how you, how you can love them, but hate what they are about. And what it is, what you're hating is what God hates. You're not hating a standard. We, we didn't make this standard. When we, are, when we were all born, we came into a world of sin and we sinned. We sinned. We went through life and there were those who who thank God for delivering. They was praying victory on our lives and thank God for the day of faithfulness where we, we, we realized and saw God's love that, Lord, you want me to come out of this life of sin. For me, what was my God took me, brought me out of gambling. Get out of get out of that. Get out of that. Get out of sleeping around. Right. Cheating and so forth. Right. Get out of that worldly music with all that profanity and raising your children and all that filth and so forth. Come out of that. Right. Come out of just lying and, and, and being deceitful. Come out of that, right? And it can go on and on. So, me, come out of that. And when I was in it, it was not okay. When I was in it, for the saints of God, they loved me. You know how, how I know they loved me? Because they continued to pray for me in spite of me. They continued to pray, God, save them deliver them my parents prayed for me prayed for me but at no time did any of them ever go oh that, that's that new girl you with okay <laughs> all right you know oh hey 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 did, did you did you hit last night i mean by any chance you know did you come up maybe you can drop you know what i'm saying 10 percent of that five million in the in the church box you know listen we're gonna come up off of your come up so, you know, even though I'm against the sin you're doing, you know, hey, you hit, make sure you put some in, you know what I'm saying? I mean, and, 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 you know, do you see it? Is that crazy? That, yeah, none of that. They hated the sin, but love the person that they know they wanted God to have vic victory over, uh, be victorious in my life. Verse 26, well, actually we're in verse. Uh, verse 27 of Nehemiah chapter um, 13. Shall we then hearken unto you to do all this great evil, to grant to transgress against our God in marrying strange wives? And one of the sons of Joada, jo the son of Eliashib, the high priest, was son-in-law to Sanballat. The Horonite. Therefore, I chased him from me. Remember them, O oh my God, because they have defiled the priesthood and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. Thus cleanse I them from all strangers. Thus cleanse I them from all strangers and appointed the and appointed the wards of the priests and the Levites, everyone in his business. And for the wood offering at times appointed and for the first fruits 
Remember me, O oh my God, for good. Can you be remembered for good, though you do good not? The answer is no. The good that we do, God should acknowledge it and consider that in dealing with us because we did so good. No. <laughs> we, we don't do something so great or so good enough that we're entitled when it comes to God, that we have earned when it comes to God. No. But here I see them knowing I'm, I'm, now I'm, I'm adding to this because I'm thinking about Hezekiah as well with his plea for more life not you know and so forth and then I'm so let me just say this let us daily walk according to, to the way the Lord want us to walk intentionally so that we can come before God with a confident heart I'm trying to choose my words wisely here I think when we know we're guilty of something we struggle with coming with boldness because we know I've been slacking right but if we know we've been going best we know how to serve God when we come before God, we do not come with, you owe me this one, God. I've been faithful to you. But rather, I hope that, as he say here, oh my, I hope, God, you will remember my good. So considerate maybe goes here. I pray that I line up may go here. But never an attitude of, I've done enough. It's good enough. Um, I, I hope. I hope you know. I'm choosing words um, wisely here. I hope the heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you for your word for this read, Lord God. Father God, keep me. I desire, Lord God, to please you, Lord God. To walk upright in heart, Lord God. That my life, Lord God, in thy sight lines up, Lord God, for that which you require and what you want, Lord God. I pray in the end, Lord God, that I, Father God, God is echoed amongst the Christians, God. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Oh, Lord God, we use that because our dear brother Paul said that but god you may have other that you may say come in enter in glory to your name father god however you speak it you wave it notion it <laughs> God, I pray we all make it. Make it, Lord God. For those of us that remain yet here today in this life, living right now, God, we know that there's much evil amongst us in this life, in this world, God. There are times, Lord God, where we may look on a thing so evil, God, we have to phantom. How can one be delivered? being that engulfed in evil. God, I've said that about my own personal life. Being so out there, doing so much wrong, God, I just didn't see how can I be saved. But God, you showed how. 
my God, my Lord, and my Savior. Help us, God, to have a pure heart, a true love for others, God, and to continue to pray, Lord God, that they will come out, come out from amongst the false, the trickery, Lord God, things that are contrary to you in every fashion, God, and come unto the truth to give their lives over to you, God. Oh, God, as we do not know everything, Lord God, help us to do know, Lord God, the foundation in which